Hello and welcome to the Irish Aesthetic. Previously, I was talking about the use of obelisks, an ancient Egyptian architectural motif, in Irish follies during the 18th century. Today, I want to talk about another borrowing from the classical world in follies, namely the temple. In particular, I'll be talking about the circular temple. From the mid-17th century onwards, this became a feature often incorporated into landscape painting. You can see just such a building to the rear of this picture by Claude Lorraine from the 1660s. Estate owners in England and Ireland, keen to create what they believed to be a classical parkland for themselves and inspired by such pictures, took to building temples in their grounds. Now this is a big subject, so I want to focus on temples that served no practical purpose whatsoever. They were strictly decorative and therefore can be regarded as pure follies. In other words, what I'm going to be talking about is a circle of columns topped by a hemispherical dome. The first example we'll look at was originally erected in the grounds of Temple Oak House, south of Dublin. This estate, now part of the suburbs of the city, was inherited from his father in 1721 by Sir Compton Domville, who proceeded to create elaborate grounds around the house. One of the features here, as you can see in this watercolour by Gabriel Beranger, was a circular temple standing at the top of a man-made mound, the building reached via a spiralling path. After Sir Compton's death, his nephew Charles Pocklington lived for a time at Temple Oak, but he'd also inherited a second estate from his uncle, the Palatial Santry Court, over on the other side of the city, and in 1780 he moved there, taking everything he could with him. That included the temple. It was still standing in 1914 when this picture was taken, but less than 30 years later, the structure had been allowed to fall into disrepair, and when the late Morris Craig came across it, it was lying in pieces on the ground. He persuaded Una, Oranmore and Brown to rescue the temple and to re-erect it by the shores of Loch Tay on her estate at Lugalaw in County Wicklow. There it has stood ever since, the burial place of various members of Una's family and the spot where the ashes of others were scattered the most recent being Garrett Brown a couple of years ago after his sudden death. Meanwhile, over in Santry, little of the original estate remains. But in part of what had been the domain, a copy of the temple was erected some years ago. It gives us some idea of how such a temple would have looked in such an Arcadian setting in the 18th century. We can get an even better sense of this by travelling west to County Clare, where another temple still stands in its original location. Today, Dromoland, for many centuries ancestral home of the O'Brien family, is a 19th century castle, but a classical house once stood here and in grounds that were intended to reflect the kind of scenery found in paintings by Claude Lorraine and others. West of the house, but on an axis to it, stands this temple, which must date from the early 18th century since it already appears on a map dated 1740. The building is an open-sided rotunda composed of eight Doric columns topped by a lead-covered dome above which hovers a small bronze statue of Mercury based on Giambologna's famous original in Florence. This is an excellent example of the folly as having no purpose other than to satisfy the yearning for beauty in our surroundings. The same can be said for a little temple that stands in the grounds of Castletown, County Kildare. It dates from 1781, when erected by the house's chatelaine, Lady Louisa Connolly, using Tuscan columns removed some years before from the house's long gallery, an early example of environmentally friendly recycling. Presumably because she only had a limited number of columns to use, part of the temple has a solid wall. The building was named after the period's most famous actress, Sarah Siddons, who Lady Louisa had met during the former's tour of this country in 1783-84. Of her time here, Sarah Siddons later wrote, This visit to Ireland answered all my expectations 
both of profit and of pleasure. I was received by all the first families there with the most flattering hospitality, and the days I passed with them will be ever remembered as among the most pleasurable of my life. Now, most of these sort of temples date from the 18th century, but their popularity never entirely waned. So let's look at one more recent example. The Irish Yew Walk at Hillsborough Castle, County Down, has a south-facing vista that concludes in Lady Alice's Temple. The walk was laid out in the late 1870s by Colonel Arthur Hill, who was then living in the house, although it belonged to his nephew, the sixth Marquess of Downshire. Colonel Hill is also believed to have erected the temple on the site of a former summer house in honour of his sister, Lady Alice Hill, who married Thomas Taylor, Earl of Bective, in 1867. Technological advances achieved by this date meant the ten ionic columns and copper-clad dome are made of cast iron. And so be it for today. In the next episode, I'll be looking at another kind of folly intentionally less well-polished. I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you so much for watching The Irish Aesthete. Goodbye. Thank you.